Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband, after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all whom were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise My sisters and brothers in Christ, we sometimes choose our career paths very early in our lives, and possibly without truly knowing what effect our work will have on us or on those around us. And there could be any number of reasons why we choose those paths. I can remember my parents telling me as a teenager that I should become a civil servant because they were stable jobs. And as a ninth grader, all I knew was that I wanted to be a pilot and to fly airplanes. And then graduating high school in 1973 and Vietnam still going on, I also knew I wanted to serve my country. So the United States Air Force seemed to be the most logical choice. And now the military really wasn't a tough decision with my father being a Marine and my mother a Navy uh, during World War II and also my brother joining the Marines in 68. Well, I guess they looked upon me as the odd one for not following in their choice of service. However, my dreams were different. I was only 17 and my parents had to sign for me to enlist, of which they're only too happy to oblige. That's because as soon as I left for basic training, they rented my room out. <laughs> That's the truth. There are many careers, many careers that could have a serious effect on the lives that they serve. Alternately, the work they choose can also have an effect on their own lives. Police, firefighters, nurses, EMTs, doctors, psychologists, social workers, teachers and education, public service, to name a few. What is the common denominator amongst these careers? 
They save lives. Think about each of these jobs individually and know that each of these can conceivably save a life. However, at any time, a person in those career paths could also lose their life. Yet, people choose these career paths every day. God chose Jesus and gave him his life work to save us. Jesus accepts his destiny, fully human and fully divine, and his life will forever have an ongoing effect on humanity. The difference between Jesus and all those careers that we previously mentioned is that Jesus knew his fate and still accepted his destiny for you and for me. The coming of our Lord was foretold in our first reading from the prophet Malachi. He announces the coming of a messenger Malachi himself, a prophet, whose name means my messenger, tells us that God is sending a messenger who will prepare the way for the Lord. That messenger was John the Baptist. Malachi says, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, referring to Mary and Joseph and the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Malachi then uses the image of a refiner's molten fire that refines metal to clarify for us that Jesus will come and will purify us. Jesus will purify us by teaching us how to live, guiding us with his teachings and through scriptures as in the Beatitudes, showing us how to live in God's love and mercy through the commandments and offering us his sacraments. Jesus also showed us how to know love, and he taught us how to get through the tough times. He showed us the importance of prayer. He showed us how he purified us of our sins and opened the gates of salvation by his passion and crucifixion on the cross. He chose the path his father gave him, knowing full well its conclusion. Our world is not perfect. Though I do think that we are in a better place in this country than most. I sometimes wondered why I was born here in the United States and not some country that embraced tyranny. We often hear, why does God allow bad things to happen? In our letter to the Hebrews, we see that evil and death was not intended by God, but was introduced into the world by the devil. It was Jesus' love for us by sacrificing his flesh and his blood that he destroyed the power of the devil. This evil one, with the power to impose evil and death on humanity, is now rendered powerless by Jesus' crucifixion. In our faith, in our faith, we may struggle, but we must know that we are not alone. Remember when Jesus was tempted in the desert? Jesus prayed to his Father for strength. And in Jesus' darkest moment on the cross, he prayed again. But this time, it was for us. When we are tempted in our lives, we too need to pray to Jesus for strength. We need to pick up the Bible, open it, and just pick a selection and just read it. Read the scripture that you just come to haphazardly. Think about it and reflect on it. Come to church when you feel you need to pray. Receive the Eucharist, our true food for life. Let the light of Jesus Christ illuminate all of our joys and guide us out of our darkness. Today we celebrate in Luke's Gospel Scripture the purification of Mary and the presentation of Jesus in the temple. Another name for today is Candlemas Day. You've seen all the candles that were presented at the top of the church there today as you walked in. And according to Mosaic law, a mother after giving birth to a male child was considered unclean. 
So after 40 days, she was to come to the temple, prayed upon by the priest, prayed over, and then cleansed. Today is 40 days after Christmas. We also celebrate that Jesus' first entrance into the temple. And just as Jesus was given as a gift from God to his parents, as customary, in thanksgiving, Mary and Joseph now bring Jesus to the temple to be consecrated and to be faithfully devoted back to God. And the reason for it to be called Candlemas is because this is the day when all the candles in the church were blessed. And while in the temple, Simeon, the high priest, holds Jesus, shows him to the Jews and the Gentiles alike, and blesses him. Simeon, who has been waiting for the Savior, could now die in peace. For he was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Christ of the Lord. Simeon waited a lifetime to see Jesus. We do not have to. And just as Jesus was brought to the temple, we too are presented to God in church at our baptisms. We are lifted in front of the community just as Jesus was. And then we are claimed for Christ by the priest or deacon and the parents, the godparents, each making the sign of the cross on the forehead of the baby. And we are anointed with consecrated oil, the chrism of salvation on the crown of our heads, making us all children of God. This is the beginning of a holy life that was made possible through the life and death of Jesus. We no longer have to wait like Simeon did because Jesus is here. He is the light that guides us on our journey. And when we choose our career paths, we don't expect death to happen until it does naturally. Jesus knew his destiny and he accepted it so he, we would know what forgiveness is and so that he would conquer death for us. But there is a lot of good in this world, but still there is a lot of evil. That is why it's so important to stay focused on what is truly important in our lives. We have the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph as examples of love, forgiveness, and mercy. And when Pope Francis reflected on an icon of Jesus' presentation in the temple, he noted that it depicts three generations that come together fulfilling a single design. The elderly persons represent faith as memory. Mary and Joseph are the family, sanctified by the presence of Jesus, who is the fulfillment of all of God's promises. Like the Holy Family of Nazareth, the Pope said, every family is a part of the history of a people. It cannot exist without the generations who have gone before it. So what will you leave the generation after you? What will be your Christian legacy to your children? And what tools of faith in your faith tool bag will you leave behind to help the next generation to deal with the evil that still is in this world? And lastly, on October 13th, or 26, 2013, Pope Francis spoke to thousands of families gathered to celebrate a weekend family pilgrimage. He said, dear families, you too are a part of God's people. Live the joy of faith. Walk joyfully in the midst of this people and remain ever close to Jesus and carry him to everyone by your witness. May God bless us all.